Hello and welcome back to more Audio. Today is the world premiere review of the Denifrips Venus 2 12th DAC. This DAC sits uh, third in the line of DACs in Denifrips' range. There are five DACs in total and often the one in the middle can represent the sweet spot for both value and sound and that is exactly my feelings about this DAC. The Venus 2 12th is the sweet spot for Denifrips and I absolutely love it. Let's go into why. Firstly, the box. It is quite heavy, it's substantial, but I quite like a substantial bit of kit, don't you? You know, when you buy a bit of hi-fi, particularly if it's a few thousand quid, you want to feel like you're buying something that isn't made of plastic. It is really good. It's lovely and beautifully machined. It's a great finish here in silver. Yeah, I really like the way they've put it together. What you have on the back are a number of different connections from USB, I2S, optical, to AES, uh, BNC and coaxial. So you've kind of got everything covered and I've tested all of them. They all sound absolutely blooming brilliant. I haven't really got a preference for any of them either. Um, if you are using a reclocker, you might go for I2S. For me, I used USB mainly as my main sort of input and it was performing exceptionally well. Also on the back, you've got the power socket, um, you've got uh, analog out via balanced or single-ended. So you've got the whole gamut that you would expect at this price point covered off. So this is the 12th edition. Therefore, it's upgraded over the normal Venus 2. What does that mean? Well, let's consult the internet. What does the internet on Vinshine Audio's website say? First of all, they have an enhanced PSU, a redesigned power supply, which is a little bit more punchy, a bit more powerful. For me, that's always a good thing because better power supplies generally, if they're well implemented, means better dynamics and better heft and potentially more refinement as well. I do believe that power supplies, particularly in sources, are incredibly important. So that's a good sign. They also have a high biased constant current delivery to the digital and analog circuitry via silver cable. Now, talking about cabling, for me, uh, whether it's copper or it's silver cable connecting two parts of this DAC together shouldn't make a huge difference, but tonally, sometimes silver does sound a little bit more crisp, a little bit more resolving, but often can be a little bit less warm. So, you know, Alarm bells might be ringing for those of us that might think this could be tipped up in some way towards detail. It also has upgraded, upgraded rather, 12th anniversary firmware. So I asked Alvin over at Vinshine, lovely bloke by the way, Alvin's a really nice guy genuinely. You meet loads of people in audio and this one is a lovely guy who is just natural. What you see on his videos is what you get in reality. Loves audio, brilliant to work with, yeah, top bloke I would say. Anyway, going back to this, so I asked him, what does the firmware bring? And he replied with, the areas of improvement are improved adapted FIFO buffering and reclocking architecture, reducing the effect of buffer overrun and underrun due to the source's clock and the DAX clock differences, reduced audio latency, eliminating phase difference between left and right channels and optimized DSP to improve the sonic performance. Now, let me be honest. I don't really know what half of that means. Well, I know what some of it means, but I don't really care. It's about, does this sound great? As a standalone DAC, should you buy it? Well, it's well featured. It's a good size. It's a good build. So far, so good. Firstly, you might be asking yourself this question. How does it compare to the standard Venus 2? And I have to hold my hands up here. I don't have a standard Venus 2 here with me. However, I have had one before. I'm quite familiar with it but everything I'm about to say should now be taken with a ginormous pinch of salt because frankly, you shouldn't really do comparisons unless you've got the actual unit next to you. So this is oral memory, oral with an A, not an O. Anyway, so what is the difference for me between the original Venus 2 and this one? Well, let's talk about the original Venus 1 first of all. I was very familiar with that. I did own it for a little while. I did like the original Venus 1. It was a great DAC, but it did sometimes feel a little bit warm and cuddly and maybe a little fuzzy around the edges in the iteration that I had, which was right at the beginning of that release. With the Venus 2 came much more in the sense of resolving powers. I felt that the, the imaging and the soundstage, it sort of got more accurate. 
well, not accurate, wrong word, more precise, that's probably better, um, and a bit more stretched towards the sides and a bit more depth as well. So it wasn't as warm and cuddly and fuzzy, but it definitely improved things in terms of the overall performance of a DAC. Compared to that then, and compared to the Venus 2, the 12th version isn't a huge difference. I've got to be honest, there's not a massive jump that I can categorically say there's a night and day difference between the two DACs. But as I said, it is from memory. What I can say is two things. The first is it seems to be slightly more punchy with that kind of pace, rhythm and timing thing. You know, that kind of tap your foot element that makes you want to really get into a, a song and into the music. It definitely brings more of that. I also felt that the imaging was just a little bit more you know, crispy, rounded, you know, uh, uh, again, I'm going to use the word precise, but it just felt a bit more corporeal. It was like you could see it more in the in the air, you know. This is a really crap way of describing it, isn't it? I apologise, but it's just a bit better. I suppose, you know, in, in the, the simplest terms, a bit more pinpoint in the imaging. But I'm not confident enough to say, without having the other one next to this, that that is the case. Perhaps this will go to the British audiophile down the line because he of course has, Tarun has, the Venus 2 as his reference. So if there's anyone out there that is well placed to comment on this one, the 12th, that is Tarun. So hopefully he will be able to pull this apart and also give you all the technical aspects as well. What I'm going to do is give the subjectivist point of view, which is that I blooming love it. And the tuning of the firmware, the way they bring out the mid-range is also notable here. It is a bit like with the Ares 2 12th the star of the show, you know, you are you are moved by the way that it represents mid-range in music and it is rather lovely. So let's go through the highs to the lows to give you a bit of a feel about how this represents music and how it also then compares to other DACs. We'll also then talk about music itself because I haven't talked about CDs or, or tracks in a while and I think talking about this DAC, which I'm clearly enthused about and really excited to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about music because this is what it's all about. It's about bringing music to life, making it feel real, making it feel like you are there with the artist. And for any system, I would say under 20,000, this is a fantastic DAC. You can of course notice a difference between other DACs, we'll get to that, but it is a lovely sweet spot in the Denifrix range and it is a lovely sweet spot potentially for anyone with a system under 20K. I think you'd have to have a supremely resolving system to notice many differences between this and something maybe two or three times the price. Let's talk about the upper frequencies. How does it represent music? Well, I'm gonna to talk to you first of all about the oversampling mode and then the non-oversampling mode. Oversampling, I like to use the slow filter. That is my favorite between that and sharp. Sharp is, is decent, you know, it's fine, but it, it's not as natural sounding for me as a slow filter. So I've used that throughout my review. In the upper frequencies with that, you have a lovely bit of extension. You get that sense of air and place within music, but it's, it's never shrill. You've got that R to R DAC architecture here, which tends to be a little bit more laid back, but sometimes it can feel slightly rolled off or like it's lacking energy, not with the Venus 2 12th. Perhaps that's the silver wire working its magic. I don't know, but it's, it's definitely doing what it should do. And it's pumping that sort of, that energy, that feel for strings, particularly, or uh, the leading edge of transients in acoustic guitar, straight into your ears. And it's rather fantastic. And I think that helps with the imaging as well. As you move down into the mid range, things are very integrated, very natural. I think um, Steve Gutenberg said about in his review of the um, Aries 212, which I watched recently, which was a very good review, so do check that out. Um, he was saying what he likes about Denifrips is that they they connect you with the music in an emotive way. I think that's what he's saying, there's an emotional connection. And that is all about the mid-range. The mid-range is where the majority of the feeling of music is. It's not necessarily where the excitement is or where the, the rhythm or the timing is, but it's definitely where it, it, it sort of takes you on a journey to another place. Because for me, listening to music is all about escapism. You know, I've got a newborn baby. I get an hour maybe every other day now to listen to music. Well, do you know what? I want to escape the world that I'm in. Not because I don't love my baby, but it's hard work. So you want to just go somewhere else, you know, close your eyes and be in a concert hall or be in an intimate gig in a smoky sort of jazz hall. I, I don't know, whatever floats your boat, but don't you just want to be there? Don't you want to transport yourself and let all of your troubles and stresses 
go. And that is the mid range. That is what the Denafrips excels at. It is wonderful. It, how's it presented in the music? It's maybe marginally forward, but not a lot. There's a tiny bit of push there, but in a very, very nicely dealt with way. And then in the bass regions, you've got heft, you've got control. And this outperforms, say, the uh, Aries 212th and the R26 for me in terms of both the depth that it can plummet to and the texture and the control of that bass. This is a better DAC for me than both of those. If you're looking for a comparison, some people will say, no, 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 the R26 is better. And I think perhaps the R26 from Gustard is a subjective DAC. For me, the way it realizes music isn't as natural as the Denifrips range. And this one here, the Venus 212th, creams it for me. I, I prefer this a lot. And yes, it is subjective. No, we're not talking about a bad DAC and a good DAC. They're both good DACs. This is a more expensive DAC, so you would expect it to outperform that DAC and for me it does so you know there you go across the board from top to bottom it is fantastic with the uh, NOS mode engaged I don't like it as much I find things get a little bit soft um, it's still very pleasant but you lose a little bit of detail a little bit of resolution and I don't know why you wouldn't listen to this DAC with the oversampling mode on albeit for me it would be in slow mode because it's implemented brilliantly. So that's it for the sound in terms of top to bottom. How about more comparisons? How does it compare to other Denifrip stacks? Well, we talked briefly there about the Aries 212th. This has the same sort of sound, but everything's bigger. So the sound stage width is a lot bigger. The imaging is a lot more defined. There's a lot more depth in the sound stage and you can pick things out in the layering, which is very pleasant. How's it compared to the Pontus 212th? Don't know, haven't listened to it, but I have heard the Pontus before. And to be honest, I'm lukewarm about the Pontus. I think it's a good DAC, but for me, I kind of feel like there are three big steps you would take. You get the Aries 212th, you get the Venus 212th, and then you go all the way to the Terminator Plus. I'm kind of lukewarm on the Terminator and the Pontus, but of course you could go the other way. You could go Pontus to Terminator, or you could go anywhere you like really, couldn't you? But I, I think there are bigger steps if you go one, three, five, in terms of the range of Denifrips DAX. What do you get in terms of a Terminator more than the Venus 212th? Well, I haven't owned the latest version of the uh, Terminator 212th, so I can tell you, but I can tell you about the Terminator 1, because I own that for over a year. And they're very close. Indeed, actually, the the only real difference that the Terminator 1 had over this one is the width of the soundstage and probably a bit more micro dynamic detail, but they're very close. Uh, and perhaps also the imaging was just a little bit, a little bit better, but I, would, I wouldn't take the Terminator 1 and the additional cost that was over this, the Venus 212th, now having listened to this version. The newest version might be a different ball game. Maybe we'll get to try that at some point and tell you all about it. But right now, this for me, sweet spot in the range, brilliant. Compared to the Molo Molo Tambaki that I've got, the Molo Molo Tambaki is still better. It's three times the price. There's not much else to say other than that is the king of resolution, of imaging and of upsampling. It can make Spotify sound flipping fantastic, that DAC, and it can make high-res files sound otherworldly. So... Yes, it is better. It's not three times as good as the Denifrips Venus 212th. And for any system under £20,000, I would say the Venus 212th is more than enough DAC for anybody. And it is brilliant. Let's talk about music now. Because music is the name of the game. It's why we're here, right? I get not very much time now having a child to listen to music and I find I'm going towards CDs more than streaming because with streaming it's a bit like cable TV, I just flick, flick, flick. And that's fine if you've got a couple of hours and you discover new artists, but actually if you've got an hour, stick on a CD, a body of music, and listen to it from start to finish. Go where the artist intended you to go and enjoy that journey. So here are some of the things I've been listening to with the Denefips Venus 212th and why it's been rather good with these albums. First up, an English band that was big in the 90s. That's the wrong way around, isn't it? Let's try again. An English band that was big in the 90s called Star Sailor. The, uh, the singer of Star Sailor is a guy called James Walsh, and his voice has been compared to that of Jeff Buckley. Hallelujah fame. Um, and they both, both those singers move you. They're all about emotion and connection and 
you know, can make you feel happy or sad or reflective. And actually the first track on this album is, is my favourite track on this album, although I think the album is, is great. It's called Love Is Here. The first track is called Tie My Hands, right? Tie Up My Hands, rather. And it starts with a circular acoustic guitar riff and in comes James's voice. And you need a system that can convey that emotion. You need something that will give mid-range detail, but in an organic way. And that's where the Denner Frips is superb. <laughs> Put this with the harbour c7 speakers that i've got the anniversary editions and it is magical magical it really is that is a combination that you have to listen to so if you haven't checked this album out maybe you're in america you never heard of star taylor first album for me best album they've done they kind of go a bit downhill after that but this is a great album do give it a go secondly a more familiar album from a band called london grammar hannah and a voice awesome now Wasting My Young Years is one of their most famous tracks and is fantastic on the Denner Frips. But the track that I use to, I suppose, test gear is, is um, Metal and Dust. Great album, though, from start to finish, got to say. But Metal and Dust is very atmospheric and delicate and nuanced. And you need a system that's resolving. It gives you kind of like the micro details and the micro dynamics to really feel that track and this does it with aplomb. I think the good combination there is with these speakers, the ones behind me, the Tannoy uh, Eatons. The Tannoys, as we'll see in the review of those, are the soundstage and imaging kings. They are insane. Probably because you've got a 10-inch driver with a coaxial horn in the middle. Uh, it's just everywhere. Sound is everywhere. And that track, Metal and Dust, through the Denifrips. Wowie. That is brilliant. Who have we got next? We've got The Piano Guys, a great entry into classical music mixed with a bit of pop, okay? So you've got stuff like A Sky Full of Stars from Coldplay, but giving it in a classical uh, edge. A particular track that I use, or two tracks actually on this, I use to get a bit of um, transient attack, and the way that it will do bass and drum texture uh, it is Cello Looper, which is track six, which gives you a really good central down the nose kind of beat in the middle. Dum, 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 just straight like that, straight down the nose. It's got to be really well imaged, but give you enough scale to feel like it's giving you the right sort of presentation. And secondly, track seven, the classical version of the Jungle Book. We're all familiar with the Jungle Book, aren't we? We've got all these kind of jungle sounds all around you and you can always close your eyes and you're in the forest and yeah, it's really cool. And then you've got the, the drums going bum, 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 bum. But you need a bit of growl, a bit of a dirty bass drum in there. And bang, yep, the Denifrips does just that. But you do need to have the oversampling mode on. It's a bit farty, flat and not very nice for me. With Noz on, I would go oversampling on. Okay, two more. First is probably a respectable audiophile album. The second one might be controversial, but don't judge me. First of all, Random Access Memories, a brilliant modern recording. If you haven't heard it in your audiophile and you're thinking, oh, Daft Punk, they are a French band no longer making music, which is a real shame, but French band that do electronica and that's not for me. Listen to this. They used proper instruments. It's not synthesized music on here. This is superb and they've got a fantastic um, set of of musicians creating the sounds on here. The particular one I like here is track four, Within, there's a piano, and it's one of my favorite piano tracks before it goes electronic after that. And you have to get piano right in terms of sound, both on the Tannoys behind me, on the Harb of C7 anniversary, and of course, on my reference, the, the Dynaudio Heritage piano sounded great through this. Then a Fripps Venus 212. Fantastic. There are loads of tracks on here which are great as well. Another one for imaging is Motherboard. That's a very electronic one, but it's all over the place. You have to have a good DAC for it. This does the job. The controversial one at the end, Josh Groban and Stages. Uh, my mum got me into Josh Groban. She really likes him. I think she joined the fan club at one point. I think she fancies him. Bit weird, he's the same age as me pretty much. Josh, if you're watching, I know you're a massive audiophile and love the channel and support it. Um, this, it this is a good album. It's not actually one of my favorites of yours, Josh Groban. I know you're watching. Um, the track though, weirdly, that I like to listen to on here is Bring Him Home, which is from Les Miserables, fantastic musical, one of my favorites. Um, but gotta say, Josh, not 
my favourite studio representation of that song. I prefer more the live versions that have been done uh, by other singers. But if you've got a good setup that brings out the details of that song, the inflections in his voice, for example, it does take it to a, a higher level of enjoyment. And with the down trips in the system, again, back with the Harbeths, because this is a vocal track and they are, you know, amazing speakers for voices. It is otherworldly, it is superb, and yeah, you know, you cannot fault the way the mid range is represented through the Denophips Venus 212. So, this has been a rave review, isn't it? There should be some caveats, and there are, like anything. Um, it's, it's not the best DAC out there. The Mola Mola Tambaki for me is a better DAC. I've heard other DACs like the Hollow um, May, which for me is equally as organic as this, but perhaps is a little bit wider in its presentation and deeper, and is a little bit crisper. But the differences between this and the Hollow Order in May, this and the Mola Mola Tambaki, are relatively small. They're not three times as good or twice as good based on the price points. This is a sweet spot of the benefits range, and it's a sweet spot for me for DAX under £5,000. This is what I choose right now. Obviously, there's, there's loads of DAX that get released every year, and opinions change. Systems change. Your system may not be the right one for this. You may have very warm sounding speakers. You might have very romantic tube amps. Remember, this is an R2R DAC architecture, which means it's not going to be the most forward or crispness or, or attacking DAC. It's not like, a, for example, a Core Dave with an M scaler, which really grinds out that fantastic transient attack and the detail. This, this isn't that. And this isn't trying to be, but you might need that. You might want that for your system because actually the rest of your system is quite laid back or warm. So you need to get the synergy right by going down the, the chord route. Perhaps you're really into techno music. You want absolute speed. Perhaps again, you know, with chord, you might want a TT2, which is slightly warmer than Dave, but perhaps not as resolving. That's closer in, of course, the price point comparison here. Loads of DACs are fantastic. There are very few DACs these days that are just bad. I have heard a few which I'm meh about, which I'll talk about in another video, but to give you an example, I'm not gonna shy away from it. Topping DACs, not a massive fan in the way they present music. Technically very strong, measure fantastically, but they don't move me. I've gotta be honest. This DAC moves me. It moves my soul. It transports me somewhere else. It makes me happy. This is a hobby, it's an enjoyment, it's a passion. It's about music. It's about escapism. If it puts a smile on your face, it's well worth the money. That's, that's my opinion on this. Now, I know we aren't the te most technical sort of channel in the world, and I'm sure others will review this and look under the hood and talk more about the measurements and the technical aspects. But putting all of that aside for one moment, my summary for this DAC is it is emotion. It is happiness. It is music. If you've got the money, if you want to take the next step up the rank of, of DACs, Look no further. The Nenefrips Venus 212 is superb. That's it. I think that's all we've got to say about the DAC today. And thank you very much for tuning in. Please do like and subscribe. Really, really appreciate it. Um, you can contribute to the channel. We have a way now just down below where you can buy us a beer if you want to. Although I probably won't buy a beer of it. I'll probably buy nappies. It is that point in my life where most money is spent on chocolate and nappies. Nappies, because you have to. Chocolate because you need something to make you happy after all of the stress of nappy changing. Enough complaining, this isn't a counselling session. I will see you back here very soon. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll, as always, sign off with enjoy the music, and we'll see you back here very soon.